Today we're going to talk about environmental settings and what exactly all these little pegs do. When you first open up your environmental settings tab, you'll see a 24 hour clock surrounded by pegs, red, green, and blue dials, a sky preview, and three color preview boxes labeled ambient color, sun color, and water color. At the bottom, there's a slider for fog density. I'll refer to the pegs around the clock as control points, and these control points are where you'll input your color settings for different times of day. Just to the left of the clock is a plus sign, a squiggly arrow, and a delete button. These buttons allow you to add control points, move them, or delete them. You can add as many or as little control points as you'd like, but it's best to begin with as few as possible before adding complexity. Any color settings you add to a control point will be keyframed by the game from one control point to the next. Moving on to the color wheels, these represent your standard RGB color mixing, but also luminosity, and that is really important to keep in mind. If you're not familiar with RGB color mixing, I suggest you go watch a video or two on the subject, but in its simplest form, by adding equal parts of each color, you'll get white. In trains, these dials also represent luminosity, so what you actually end up with is various values of gray, from black all the way to white. By adding slightly more of one color than the other, we can tint the gray to various hues. You really have to keep in mind that as you turn up the dial, you're not only adding more color value, but you're adding luminosity. In Trains 19, they thankfully added luminosity as a separate slider, but here in Tain, it's all controlled just by these dials. As a dial is increased, you'll notice the color getting more saturated, but it's also getting brighter. This is super important to keep in mind, and I think it's the thing that makes environmental settings so difficult for people to get set up properly. Our three color preview boxes allow us to see what hue our sunlight and ambient light will be. It's a bit complex to explain exactly how this is translated into the game, so I recommend keeping an eye on your scene while you're adjusting the color values. The sun color refers to what in photography we would call your key light. This is the brightest source of light in your scene, and in this case, that's the sun. This will always be the most dominating color and luminosity value in the game, so I always start by configuring this one first. The ambient color is referring to what in photography we would call fill light, or reflected light. This is the bit of light that bounces into shadow areas and reduces their overall contrast. In the case of trains, this will basically be the color and contrast of your shadows. You'll want to configure this one after you set the sun color, and generally this value is going to change throughout the day as the sun moves across the sky. Below ambient colors, we have our water color, and this should be pretty self-explanatory. At the very bottom, we have our fog density slider, and this will allow you to add different levels of fog or haze throughout the day. Personally, I like to have a little bit more fog in the morning and in the evening, uh, rather than midday to represent a bit of dew or humidity, that sort of thing. I think it adds a lot of atmosphere and dimension to the routes when it's done properly. In the middle of all this, you'll see a preview of your skybox. There are three points represented in here that you can configure individually, and they each represent a different part of the sky. The top represents the very top of the sky, which is usually around the limit of your field of view. The middle is the middle of the sky, and the bottom represents the horizon. Generally, I don't mess around with these settings too much, except for maybe sunrise and sunset, uh, so you could usually just leave these as default. When you're configuring your color settings for the first time, make sure to have the control point you want to modify selected. If you don't select a control point, your settings will not be saved. Start with the control point at noon, and then set your morning and evening control points. Once you're happy with the brightness and color, you can begin to add fog or other control points throughout the day. Don't expect to get it all right the first time though, it usually takes a bit of practice and fine tuning to get it the way that you want. I don't think we've ever gotten a clear answer on this part, but it should be assumed that the environmental settings are saved within the session rather than the route. This is sort of an unconfirmed assumption of mine since I've experienced mixed results saving it both ways, so it's just best to save a base session and work from there. I think you guys will agree that good environmental settings can make or break how a route looks and feels, so I highly recommend taking the time to get it right early on in the build process.